I'm Val, and I'm super excited that you're still with us learning about forest ecosystems. Last time, we talked about biodiversity, the variety of life in an ecosystem, and why it's important. And before that, we've talked about all the biotic and abiotic factors that make up a healthy ecosystem. But what we haven't spent much time on is looking at how people fit into this whole picture. Even though we live in our human-built environments, those environments exist within a larger ecosystem. And so do we. Our yards, neighborhoods, city parks, and sidewalks all exist within ecosystems and are ecosystems themselves. Does that seem a little strange? Well, let's check. Are the laws there? Can you look out your window and see light, air, water, and soil? Maybe not all the time, but when it rains, the water's there, right? And remember, soil is under everything we build. We might not always be able to see it, but it's there somewhere. What about the biotic parts? Can you see any producers, like moss or weeds or other plants? What about consumers? Do you ever see insects or birds fly by? Or squirrels climb up in the trees? Can you see any decomposers? Do you ever look outside and see mushrooms or mold? Or even just mildew in your windowsill? And remember, decomposers are often microscopic. So even if we can't see them, they're probably there somewhere. If the leaves that fell in the fall or maybe some weeds that got pulled up at the sidewalk have disappeared over time, chances are decomposers had some part to play in that. So we have our evidence. From our homes, we can see all the different aspects of an ecosystem all around us. And that's a really good thing. Just like other consumers, we need a healthy ecosystem to support us and to help us stay healthy. But unlike other consumers, we travel to ecosystems outside of the one where we mainly live. We might travel for work, to visit family, or just for fun and interact with tons of different ecosystems on the way. The products we use come from all over the world too. Maybe you have a bed frame that was made from a tree harvested in Canada, or you ate an apple in lunch that was grown in South America. Maybe right now you're watching this video on a computer made from materials mined in 10 different countries around the globe. Without even leaving our homes, we can interact with ecosystems around the entire planet, and we do every day. And as we interact with all of these ecosystems, near and far, it's really important that we do our best to act as stewards. In all of our interactions, we have the ability to do harm or to do good. And that ability can be a little scary, right? Because we don't want to harm all of these ecosystems, the amazing ecosystems that live around us. But really, that ability is powerful because every day we get to make the choice to be stewards and to help all of these amazing ecosystems. So how can we be stewards of this whole global ecosystem that we call home? I think the easiest way is to start small and to start at home. Think of some small ways that you can be a steward of the ecosystems where you live. What choices can you make that will help you be a steward? Maybe you decide to start by making sure you put all your waste in the right place. Trash in the trash bin, recycling in the recycling bin, food waste into the compost or the food and yard waste bin. And that might take some research, right? You might have to figure out what really belongs where. But once you figure that all out, you could even help your family and friends learn how to put their waste in the right places too. Maybe you decide that any time you walk past trash on the ground, you'll pick it up and put it in the trash can. Maybe you choose to put up a bird feeder to feed your neighborhood birds. Or decide that you'll walk or bike to the park or take public transportation instead of driving a car that burns fossil fuels. Maybe on the weekend, you decide to go to a stream cleanup or to volunteer with a group like the Greenway Trust, planting native trees. Even though smaller actions might not seem like they help the global ecosystem much, 
They do great things for the ecosystems that are right where we are. When we live with the mindset of ecosystem stewards, we make choices that help the ecosystems around us survive and thrive. And as you start to learn more and to interact more with different ecosystems, your power as a steward grows bigger and bigger and you're able to affect more and more ecosystems and organisms. Learn as much as you can and use what you learn to decide how to act. Then teach others what you learn so they can do the same. What do you think is your most powerful tool as a steward? Your voice. Teach other people all the things that you've learned about forest ecology. Bring them to your sit spot and show them all the cool stuff that you've found and explored. And teach them how to make their own sit spot so that they can see those cool things too. And for our activity, think about what stewardship actions you can take. Brainstorm some ways to be an ecosystem steward. They can be things that you can do, things that adults can do, things that companies or governments can do, even just things that you could do to take care of your sit spot. We've listed some in this video and in other videos, but I bet you can come up with some more. And then from that list, think of at least two things that you can pledge to do yourself. We'd love to see the actions you come up with and the pledges that you make. If you'd like, share them with us. Send your pledges, your lists of actions, or even photos of the results of your stewardship to education at mtsgreenway.org, and we might share them on our social media. I hope you all feel empowered in your roles as ecosystem stewards, and I'm really excited to see the positive changes that you can make. Thank you for thinking and learning with us, and I hope to see you back at our next video where we wrap up all of the things that we've learned in this video series. See you next time.